Hello guys and let's talk about elections in Russia. I know this is an oxymoron, something that contradicts itself and I do know there are no real elections in Russia and as a result no real candidates. But even fake ones prepared by FSB can seem dangerous to Putin and can be banned from registering as candidates for these elections in March 2024, like Boris Nadezhdin. Many of you were asking me about him, same as Navalny, are there any chances that these people ever become presidents of Russia and will they change something for Ukraine? The answer is always no, 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 but let me tell you more. First about Boris Nadezhdin, second, why he was a fake candidate, and most importantly, why even a fake candidate like him will not be allowed to participate in the elections. All of this demonstrates how deeply wounded and uh, ruined Russian society is and how important it is to stop this regime from multiplying for the next decades, otherwise all of us are in great danger. My name is Anna and I vlog daily from Ukraine since the start of the brutal Russian invasion. So if you're new to the channel, you support Ukraine, please subscribe and help us fight against Russian propaganda and fake news. And my longtime friends, check your subscription status and hit notification button. So we know that 2024 is going to be an election year. Close to 2 billion people all over the world will vote on different levels of elections, but Russians will not. Why? Because their president cares for them and decides the results of elections for more than 20 years already. Just imagine, there are generations of people who were born and died somewhere in the battlefields of Ukraine, for example, while Putin is still a president. That's pathetic. And that's what dictatorship is. From time to time, they do have to imitate the election process and they need candidates fully controlled by the Kremlin. So one of the most important things that you have to understand, all candidates that have ever participated in Russian presidential elections are always FSB controlled and fake. And yes, it is also true about Boris Nadezhdin. Uh, he is definitely not a self-made leader who wants to oppose Kremlin, but even he managed to seem dangerous to the Botox monster Putin. Boris Nadezhdin is 60, he is a professor of physics and law, and he was quite active in the passive political life of Russia. He uh, was an aider to various political figures. In the 90s, it was even Boris Nemtsov, a real opponent of Putin, who was killed, if I'm not mistaken, in 2015 in front of Kremlin as an illustration of the dangerous Putin's revenge. Remember to subscribe to see our revenge on Putin, demonstrate your solidarity with Ukraine and see Russia defeated. So Boris Nadezhdin uh, also worked as an observer on 2012 elections for, yes, President Putin. So of course he has all the connections and all the information he needs from FSB and FSB has everything about him. And he was allowed to participate in this election campaign 2024 because, as all Russian media claims, he is not charismatic at all and he does not possess this much-needed masculine charisma. I'm wondering, do they mean Putin has it? By the way, we have a really good video on that toxic masculinity of Putin. Do check it in our Russian crime series. But anyway, of course, it's BS. I don't know. Uh, even those of you who believe that Putin is an evil genius might have changed your mind dramatically after watching two and a half hour lecture on fake history that he did with Tucker Carlson. And that was the only moment when I felt really sorry for that Tucker because listening to this BS is kind of very complicated. Putin is not charismatic, but he is a dictator in Russia for decades, which means he wants to remain until he is dead and even a couple of decades after he's dead because no one will tell the Russians and Russians, they don't ask questions. 
So Nadezhdin tried to participate in these elections, but on the 8th of February he was denied. His registration was cancelled. Of course, he will go to the court, but this will not give him anything. What happened? Why this man that is not rebellious, that is actually very pro-Russian and participated in a number of political parties dependent on Putin and does not seem, you know, like a great warrior, does not have this charisma they talk about, why did he become dangerous to the regime? Because of what they call Tikhanovskaya uh, phenomenon uh, or something that reminds of Belarus 2020 when uh, it was not that people voted for Tikhanovskaya, who was a weak candidate and we see it right now very well, but people united to vote against um, Lukashenko. And this Tikhanovska effect now takes place with Nadezhdin. Uh, after they've collected the polls, they noticed that he has 8% of support. 8% of support is pretty high. For Putin, it sounds awful. And they decided not to let him register as a candidate. So they are so much afraid that people who do not support Putin will vote for Nadezhdin just because... Uh, they hope it may bring them any kind of change. Actually, it sounds funny because in Russian, Nadezhdin derives his name, his surname derives from the word hope. So there is no hope for Nadezhdin. And um, honestly, uh, another very demotivating fact is that polls demonstrate even if Putin did not fake these elections, did not um, falsify them, he would get to be the president because his real support is about 60% in Russia, which is huge, taken into account that all of these people saw all of his crimes and still adore him as their leader. One more proof that it is not a war of Putin, it is a war of Russia. And serious work has to be done with the population after Putin is taken to the Hague court instead of his inauguration speech. So anyway, uh, now Nadezhdin will try to uh, take the things to the court. What is pathetic, Russia has specifically designed laws, election laws, which Kiev Independent describes as draconian, and I like the attribute, or draconic, but you've got the idea, like dragon where you have to bring 105,000 signatures in your support, but not more than this. And then when they check the signatures and more than 5% seem to be um, not authentic, then you're out of the competition. Why don't they let you bring more than 100 for uh, 105,000? Like, why not? Just because... That's the instrument that allows them to filter anyone they want. Just saying that, okay, digitization of signatures led to some distortions. And as a result, you did not manage to bring the needed amount and blah, blah. <clears throat> so, of course, everyone in Russia knows that. Everyone in Russia is okay with that. And there is no hope that any candidate during Putin's regime will be elected there. Another extremely important reminder that both Nadezhdin and even many of you I know like uh, Navalny, you have to understand these people are Russian imperialists. And if you listen attentively and read their interviews and how they comment Russian war in Ukraine, you will clearly see they care just about like uh, Russia, they do not want to take the responsibilities for this war annexation. And many of them play with the territories. They say, oh, we will not return everything. Well, Russia is so big and so on and so forth. Of course, they are not so crazy as Putin is. They would not threaten to nuke the world. And of course, they are less evil, but they are evil and they hate democracy. They also consider West rotting and Ukraine dangerous because we are an example of a successful democracy in once occupied communist republic. Let me know in the comments below, would you like to hear more about Russian elections and their fake candidates or what are the other topics you'd like to hear? 
Thank you for buying me coffees and becoming my patrons. I value your support greatly and send you much love and gratitude from Ukraine. Do check our merch shop with new Valentine collection that speaks about love to Ukraine and democracy and freedom worldwide. Remember to subscribe to my Instagram, threads, Twitter and join my Discord community. But most importantly, united we stand. Thank you. Slava Ukraini!